Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Goes Sweden. Today, from the back of my car, because I was just swimming outside, it is super windy and water temperature 8 degrees, but I yeah, prefer being in here. It is so spacious when you put the, the seat all the way to the front so I can easily chill in the back here. And today I want to talk about Tesla's latest update, version 2025.38.3. Free. Unfortunately, I have not received it myself yet. Maybe also due to the fact that I have not updated my car due to the reason that I was kind of scared with the airbag deployment. However, now after waiting five, six weeks, I think it is time and safe to say that I'm gonna install the update. Tesla even stated themselves that the airbag deployment is not vision only and there were no headlines at all. Of course, there's probably always a chance that it might happen, but I want to have this update due to one big thing and no, that is not Tron mode. That is the ability to activate 3D buildings. So when we are in the navigation now, you have little 3D objects there. You have little buildings, different heights and everything. And I'm really, really curious how accurate is it going to be? Of course, when you're like in a famous city, I think you have huge skyscrapers and everything. But when you're like in the area where I am living, where you only have a few houses, how does it really look? Is it just the buildings or is it also maybe like some trees or stuff? I'm really curious how it's going to look. And I'm also curious, is this only available for the um, like map view or also for the satellite view? Because of course in the satellite view, it would kind of not be fitting because you have those gray boxes on top of the satellite. I'm really not sure how they're going to implement this, but I'm very, very curious and it's going to be awesome. It really is probably the next step of Tesla migrating the Tesla vision view and the map to one whole thing in the future with Unreal Engine. Just imagine you have like your typical view of your car and then you start driving and basically the car just like goes straight and you have everything around you in one map. So you have the line, you have the buildings and there's no second like window for the map. So basically like you have the full screen uh, for FSD and also autopilot now already, just way more detailed. And if you just zoom out there, you have the map view instead of that, if you want that. I think there are gonna be crazy updates coming in the future with Unreal Engine. But the 3D buildings are unfortunately only coming to the AMD driven cars. So if you have an Intel, maybe there might be a more reduced version coming later, which is like not as detailed or something like this. But I think it is pretty clear already since a year that Intel cars are not going to receive all the updates that are coming to AMD. Unfortunately, second big thing where I still don't really know what to expect besides having seen the Tesla announcement is the collaboration with Tron probably based on their latest movie that is coming out or maybe already in the movie theaters right now. And we have Tron mode. So what I expect Tron mode to be is like you have the Santa Claus mode that you have like this little switch in the toy box where you have the motorcycle with the red line behind you. Thinking about this without the fact that this might be a commercial thing, I think it is pretty cool. It is a secondary mode that is fully voluntarily. I'm gonna try it out. Of course, it's just a play thing. I think I will use it like maybe one ride and then you're like ah the normal design is just better so i turn it off again but now the big thing the where a lot of discussion is going on is people are complaining about that tesla is pushing advertisement in their cars due to this tron thing and tesla apparently made a deal with disney that it's coming tesla now spent money or like work hours on developing this commercial tron mode for the Tesla, instead of putting the work hours and the manpower into different features that people maybe are looking for way further, instead of having the strong view. And I understand that point that people are not really happy about having the time spent there. But at the same time, I think Tron is kind of fitting to the Tesla theme. It is futuristic. It is a certain thing where probably also Elon said like, oh yeah, I like the original movie and we need this. People also not, never complained about the farting thing or that you can drive on Mars. These are features that Tesla also just did. And of course, this is nothing that makes the car better. It's just funny things. And I see this Tron mode on the same level. If the next update now brings us, I don't know, Star Wars or Marvel things, then yes, I can understand that this is going to be too much. 
But as of right now, if it's free and if you can turn everything off without having it in your face, I'm fully fine even with commercials. Next thing that is coming is the dashcam viewer update. And this one is actually a good one in my opinion because now here we have street names included in the dashcam thing. And this is in my opinion a really good one because sometimes it's just nice to have more detail. Also just a little convenience thing, nothing too crazy. But I mean, it's, it's good. It makes the thing better, so I'm fully fine with this. Then the Cybertruck also got a side camera recording now. So Cybertruck also still gets updates, even though it's not the best car of Tesla. I have given my take on the Cybertruck right up there in that video, if you want to see what I think about this vehicle. Another feature that is coming are new scroll wheel functions. So this is one of the things that I actually never use myself. When you hold down the left scroll wheel button, you're gonna have some easy access features. For example, like open glove box or adjust the AC temperature or the speed of the AC. And now we have more coming here. We have the bioweapon defense mode when you have a Model Y. We have the mute navigation and also the music light sync that you can now activate or deactivate. I think navigation, mute and unmute is a good one if you are usually driving with navigation, but then maybe you have a lot of people and you don't want to have it interrupted or also listening to music. I don't like navigation voice in general. Another update, which is however only regarding Canada. Canada is now receiving Grok. So after the US, Grok has made it to Canada. Nothing big, unfortunately. I was hoping it's going to go worldwide now, reach Europe, but still waiting. Hopefully by the end of this year during the Christmas update that this update is going more public in the rest of the world. Then in the release notes, it said that the onboarding guide was available, but I think I have already received that maybe they have done some update on the onboarding guide that now this is even more detailed, has maybe adjusted due to the new cars that have been published by Tesla, the standard Model 3 and standard Model Y. I don't know, but yeah, onboarding guide, some update. We have to check it out once I have this on my car. And now we have some minor updates. One of them is the Apple Music now provides an organized playlist with folders. You have expanded artist pages. So a better improvement of Apple Music. I'm personally a Spotify user, so I will not ever see this feature happening on my car. I hope that for the Apple Music users, this is going to be a great update. Maybe it makes your experience listening to your music even better. Another thing where Tesla is really good at is making your experience even more seamless. Now you can log into your media using the Tesla app. So for example, when you go to Netflix, there should now be the ability that you can log in using your phone, your Tesla app, without having need to type your whole password and everything on the screen. I personally only use YouTube on my car and I don't even remember if I had to manually type my password and login information or if I could use like a QR code in the past. I don't know. But yeah, now they have improved this even more. So it should be going to be easier. And the last thing that is mentioned in the release notes is that now when you're driving, you can lock your driving profile with a phone key. And this one is a huge one for people that rent out their car or give it like to friends. Let's say you have your car, you have like your Netflix account and everything set up and you don't want anyone else to mess around with your own like Netflix and things. Then you can now lock it behind your phone key. And if your phone is not nearby the car, they cannot use your profile. And that is a smart one. It's a good safety feature for people sharing their vehicles and I like that. But also for me, this is not a big thing. Something that I really have to say is a big thing and it is even undocumented is a visualization when you are charging your vehicle. And this is awesome. I love those small details. So now when you charge your car, it will show right next to the cars the charger and they even have different models so it is a different model for using a supercharger for using a third party charger a wall connector or a mobile connector i don't know if we have all of these images already spreading out but i definitely want to see how it looks and also if they have different models for the version 4 and the version 3 superchargers because of course they have a different design. I'm very curious, but I love these details. And then we have service mode improvements and there we have new panels, for example, for the trunk 
and also the frunk. You can check the status of your trunk and frunk there. So if it's fully closed, if it's open, if the motors need calibration or anything. So that is really cool in my opinion. But I think the frunk one, if I see it right, is only coming to the Cybertruck because it's like a not a manual one. Two more panel updates that we have is the camera panel that receives an update. So now you can actually detect if the cameras are misaligned. You can update new firmware for the cameras and things like these in the service menu. Of course, the service mode is not a mode where a lot of people go to. But if you are more working on your car yourself, it's a nice feature. I'm definitely going to go through these just to see what we have as an ability to do there. And then in the end, we have just a little wording update, I think, for the brake panel. So with the stiffness test, they have renamed it. I don't know if there's really an update in there, but it is the update 2025.38.3. And in my opinion, compared to the last one, which was the dot .32, this is a bigger update, of course, most of the things that are coming here as well are not major improvements in your car. They are nice little things, nice little visualization updates and just other things that make your car feel even more wholesome, even more complete, but more on a, on a fun side, not on the, on the practical side though, to be honest. But still, I am here on a positive note for this update. Let's see, let's check it out once I have the ability to update. But as of right now, I would give this a thumbs up Unfortunately, Grog, the big thing still not available around the world besides North America. This is probably also the last big update now that is coming out before the Christmas update. We are in the beginning of October now. I don't expect Tesla to do anything crazy before the Christmas update in the beginning of December. We might have one more in November coming up, which is in my opinion, however, definitely gonna be less content than, than we have here because they're probably gonna save a lot for Christmas updates so that you have a huge list there. I'm very excited for the Christmas update, but I don't wanna set my hopes too high. Okay, guys, with that said, what do you think about Tesla's update 2025.38.3? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's, yeah, it's neutral? Or do you think it's bad? Tesla should do the following to make your car even better. But if you are in need of a new Tesla, feel free to use my referral link right up there to not only support me, but also give yourself a discount either in some supercharging kilometers or some reduction in price or a few months of full self-driving. Wherever you are in the world, all of these, of course, are dependent in your area. I hope Tesla is gonna increase the incentives now over the fourth quarter, because last year they definitely pushed it more. But with that said, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. We're gonna see each other back in the next video. But until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.